Hello. This week, I thought we'd go back and talk about the heart, but um, let's talk about the uh, the blood vessels that are supplying the heart itself with blood. Let's talk about the coronary arteries and the cardiac veins. Um, so let's have a poke around this model. Here's a model of the heart. This is an oversized model of the heart. It's fairly typical um, of what we have in the lab. Uh, in fact, I looked at all the models of the hearts in the lab that I could find, and they all had the same arrangement of coronary arteries. Um, they had the same sort of layout, which is the most dominant layout. It's the sort of layout you'll read about in textbooks. Whereas when we look at our collection of um, hearts from cadavers, from real people, we find a lot more variability. But let's have a look. Let's, let's work our way through here. So if the heart is kind of like this, then we have a right side and a left side. So we have the right atrium up here. Here's the right ventricle. Here's the left atrium back here. Here's the left ventricle. Here's the aorta. Here's the pulmonary trunk. Here's the right pulmonary artery, sorry, the left pulmonary artery, and here's the right pulmonary artery in there. There's the superior vena cava and so on, all right? If we look at the heart, we find there are two main coronary arteries. And the coronary arteries, if this is the aorta, look, the coronary arteries are actually coming out of the aorta. So they're coming out of the aorta, they're branching from it just superiorly to the, to the valve. So the valve is there at that level. So what that means is that as blood is pushed out of the heart and up the aorta, as it sinks back down again against the, the leaflets of the valve, it then gets pushed out around the heart, around through the coronary arteries. So we've got two main coronary arteries. And notice to start with, they're a little bit obscured. So if these are the atria, then, then these are the, these flappy bits of the oracles. And the two coronary arteries to start with are obscured by the oracles. So if we pull back the oracle, here's the right coronary artery. And the right coronary artery will pass around the right side of the heart. So it's going to supply blood to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, um, to the interventricular septum, to the sinoatrial node. So there's the right coronary artery then is going to supply blood to the right side of the heart, the right atrium, the right ventricle. And let me take this base off. As it passes around, it gives off a few branches. Now, its most important branch is this one here. So now we're looking at the base of the heart. This is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. So this is the septum in between. This is the groove in between the two ventricles. And it's filled with fat in life. These are normally covered in fat. In a dissection, you'll see the fat removed so you can see the coronary arteries. Now, as this is the anterior part of the heart, this would be the posterior part of the heart or the base. This branch here is called the posterior interventricular coronary artery. It's between the ventricles, it's posterior. So it's the posterior interventricular coronary artery. This branch here is a marginal branch. If we look at the left coronary artery, that's also coming from the aorta, but it's hidden as the pulmonary trunk goes over the top of it. It's hidden by the oracle here, but the left coronary artery is, is passing underneath the oracle. And in fact, it's already split. So it's, it's branching, it's split to give off this branch here so now we're looking at the anterior part of the heart. There's the left ventricle, there's the right ventricle. Here's another groove between the ventricles. So this is the left anterior descending coronary artery, or the left anterior interventricular coronary artery. Or rather, it usually just gets called the anterior interventricular coronary artery, or the left anterior descending coronary artery, the LAD as surgeons typically abbreviate it. And as we come around here, this artery here that's now passing around the left side of the heart, so this is going to supply blood to the left ventricle, so the left ventricle and the left atrium, this is now the circumflex or the left circumflex coronary artery. And it's giving off a marginal branch here as well. Sometimes there are more than one marginal branch, so this is, this is more variable than maybe textbooks and models would lead you to believe. Um, if you look at the, the uh, 
anterior interventricular coronary artery and you follow it round. On this model, you can see that it actually joins up with the posterior interventricular coronary artery. So we have, we have a joining of two arteries. We have two anastomoses, or have an anastomosis here. Um, and this is reasonably common. And there are two other anastomoses between coronary arteries and the heart as well. And really these are de described as end arteries. So these arteries are really important. They're supplying blood to the myocardium, to the muscle of the heart. And the muscle of the heart is, of course, constantly working. So occlusion of these blood vessels causes a problem. There'll be reduced blood flow to a region of the heart that needs blood flow all the time. So it'll become ischemic and, of course, um, cause problems with the heart. Um, potentially... If an occlusion develops slowly, collateral circulations and astomoses can develop for alternate routes of blood flow to form. Um, and this one here is probably the, the most likely to be somewhat effective, is this anastomosis between the anterior interventricular coronary artery and the posterior interventricular coronary artery. And say in cadavers, we often don't, don't see these joining up. Now, this concept of the right coronary artery forming the posterior interventricular coronary artery and the left coronary artery forming the anterior interventricular coronary artery. This describes the arrangement of coronary arteries in about 70% of the population. Most people have this. And we describe this arrangement of coronary vessels as um, having dominance. The artery that forms, or the artery that gives off the branch of the posterior interventricular coronary artery, um, defines the dominance of this circulation. So this heart, the posterior interventricular coronary artery, is a branch of the right coronary artery, so this heart is right coronary artery dominant. In some hearts, and we see this in, in cadaver cadaveric hearts, in some hearts the, the left coronary artery will give off the posterior interventricular coronary artery. And if the left coronary artery gives off the posterior interventricular coronary artery, then that's described as having, uh, as being a, a, a left coronary artery dominant circulation. Um, and sometimes both arteries contribute and then you have a co-dominant system. So of course, the coronary arteries are called the coronary arteries because this is like a, a crown of arteries around the heart. If you were to inject a radio-opaque dye into the left coronary artery or the right coronary artery, you would see a different pattern. And you need to be able to imagine the shape of these arteries in three dimensions, so that when you see them injected with a radio-opaque dye and then presented to you um, on a radiograph, a, which is called a, an angiogram, because you're looking for an occlusion maybe in one of these coronary arteries, you want to be able to work out in your head, uh, you want to be able to translate those, this, these three-dimensional structures into essentially what is a two-dimensional image and recognise where you would expect the flow to be seen and where an occlusion might be found. So if you inject the, coronary ar the, if you inject the right coronary artery with a radio-opaque dye, you'll see the pattern of the right coronary artery and if you inject it into the left coronary artery you'll see a different pattern. So then depending upon the dominance of the coronary arteries um, of your patient the posterior interventricular coronary artery could appear from the as a branch from the right or the circumflex the left coronary artery side. Okay simple so those are the coronary arteries of the heart. Um, the other thing to add then are the blue bits the veins of the heart. So for some reason the veins of the heart are called the cardiac veins and there are three veins to remember great, middle and small. Why are they called great, middle and small? Why are they called great, medium and small? So the veins draining the myocardium of the heart are the great, middle and small cardiac veins. Um, and they're you know in roughly similar places. So the great cardiac vein is this guy here. He's on the anterior. So if this is the anterior heart this is the anterior heart. Here's the, the great cardiac vein here is running in the sulcus between the two ventricles. And it's also then gonna drain the left atrium. And this is gonna run around to this structure here. This here is the coronary sinus. So all of the veins are draining into the coronary sinus. So if that's the great 
cardiac vein. On the other side, we were looking at we were looking at the groove between the left and right ventricles. And in here, we have the middle cardiac vein. Don't know why it's called the middle cardiac vein. If you've got great and small, shouldn't it be medium cardiac vein? Whatever. Um, the middle cardiac vein then runs and drains in here. So it's draining both ventricles. It's draining the myocardium of both ventricles. So great middle and small. So if that's great and that's middle, then small is this vein here. So do you see where we are? All right, so if I rotate this around to the right side, the small cardiac vein is running in this groove between the right atrium and the right ventricle, and that's running into the coronary sinus here. Then the coronary sinus is going to drain that blood into the right atrium, which is that hole there. So of course it makes sense, doesn't it, that you're draining deoxygenated blood into the right side of the heart and they, get, they can then get pumped through the pulmonary circulation to become uh, oxygenated by the lungs and then uh, back into the left side and around the body. The coronary sinus does have a valve, so there's a valve between the coronary sinus and the opening into the atrium, so that when the atrium contracts, blood doesn't get pushed into the coronary sinus. Blood can just flow one way from the coronary sinus into the atrium. Okay, so that's the blood supply to and blood supply from the myocardium of the heart. You can see a number of smaller veins draining into the other cardiac veins and they're also a little bit variable, but it's those three um, cardiac veins that you want to worry about. The coronary sinus and... Um... Okay. <laughs>